niacin. Here's how to know if you need more of it. Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Masterjohn of ChrisMasterjohnPhD.com, and this is Chris Masterjohn Light, where the name of the game is Details, Schmitail. Just tell me what works. And today we're going to talk about signs that you might need more niacin. I'm going to be doing some episodes upcoming on how to get niacin from food. And so if you fall into any of the categories in here, you want to pay special attention to the upcoming episodes. So first of all, niacin is important to repair damage to our skin when it's exposed to normal amounts of sunlight. So if you have a dermatitis that any kind of inflammation in the skin, it could be as simple as reddening, not the reddening that is a normal response to the sun and goes away or turns into a tan, but a persistent reddening and inflammation in the skin that is chronic and is related to normal sun exposure and goes away when you're not exposed to the sun, that could be a sign that you need more niacin. Anything with mental health that ranges from depression in the simplest state to paranoid or suicidal or aggressive behavior, or even schizophrenia-like psychosis with audio and and visual hallucinations, anything on that spectrum could be a sign that you need more niacin. The way to know is that getting more niacin through a supplement or through food makes it go away. So there's a lot of people who are depressed, a lot of people who are schizophrenic, a lot of people who are suicidal, and niacin deficiency is not their problem. But if it goes away quickly, when you improve the niacin content of your diet or when you take niacin supplements, in those cases, it's a problem with niacin. Any kind of persistent digestive disorder could be related to niacin, both because niacin deficiency compromises your gut and also because when your gut is compromised, you absorb less niacin from your food. Based on what we know niacin does in the body, And based on studies with supplementation and correlations with niacin status, we could also suggest that we might see the following in suboptimal niacin status. Fatigue, exercise intolerance or poor exercise performance, accelerated aging, especially aging of the skin, especially aging of the skin in response to sunlight, cancer and inflammation of the esophagus, vulnerability to leukemia, and skin cancer. Another way to assess the probability that you need more niacin is to look at what risk factors you have that might lead to a niacin deficiency. Relying on a diet that is low in non-collagen protein, especially if that diet is high in whole grains, is a recipe for suboptimal niacin status. Additionally, a diet that is high in fat or a diet that's high in sugar is another major risk factor for having poor niacin status. Any form of cellular damage ranging from normal exposure to sunlight to having a particularly damaging disease state, anything on that spectrum is going to consume niacin in repair processes. So when we're exposed to cellular damage, whether it's from something like sunlight or it's from something like a disease state, that's likely to make us more likely to need more niacin. Although a severe clinical niacin deficiency is rarely seen in our day, there are some populations who are vulnerable to a clinical niacin deficiency. These include alcoholics, HIV and AIDS patients, people with carcinoid tumors, which are tumors that make serotonin, people with Crohn's disease or another digestive disorder known as megaduodenum, and people with a rare genetic disease of tryptophan metabolism or tryptophan absorption rather called heart nups disease. If any of these apply to you, then those are signs that you might need more niacin. But when it comes down to it, decreasing niacin status is associated with aging. It's also associated with the degenerative diseases that are most commonly to occur in our society. And that suggests that we should all take an interest in how to boost our niacin status. I've done a couple episodes on niacin supplementation. Now I'm gonna start getting into, in the next few episodes, getting niacin from food. All right, I hope you found this useful. Signing off, this is Chris Masterjohn of chrismasterjohnphd.com. This has been Chris Masterjohn Light, and I will see you in the next episode.